Hello, it's Claudio, and in this video I will show you how to create a Python virtual environment. An isolated environment for your Python project dependencies. On my Linux system I have defined two aliases, one called pip that points to pip3 and one called python that points to python3. Let's verify the python and pip installations using the commands python-version and pip-version. And now it's time to install the virtual env package. To do that, I will use the command pip install virtual env minus minus user. When we specify the minus minus user flag, Python installs the virtual env package inside the subdirectory under the home directory of my user. Without a minus minus user flag, this command would fail because my user doesn't have right to install the package inside the system level Python. Let's have a look at the content of the .local directory inside my home directory. As you can see, the lib subdirectory under .local contains the virtual env package that we've just installed with the pip command. And let's confirm the virtual env is installed properly using the virtual env minus minus version command. I'm creating a directory called projects and inside this directory, I will create my first virtual environment. To do that, I will use the command virtual env codefather, where codefather is the name of the virtual environment. Using the ls command after executing the virtual env command, I can see that there is a directory that was created called codefather. That's basically my virtual environment. So my virtual environment is contained inside the directory codefather. With the three command, I can see the subdirectories inside this directory. You can see a bin subdirectory, a lib subdirectory. Inside the lib subdirectory, you will see all the packages that are installed inside the Codefather virtual environment. And in the bin directory, you can see a Python binary that is just a symlink to the system Python located in slash usr slash bin. It's also possible to create a virtual environment without using the default Python interpreter of the system. I can use the minus p flag and pass the full path of a different Python interpreter to create a virtual environment that uses a different Python interpreter. In this case, I use the flag minus p followed by slash usr slash bin slash python 2.7. As you can see, looking at the bin directory inside my new virtual environment called Codefather 2.7, the Python binary used is Python 2.7. And now it's time to activate my virtual environment called Codefather. Activating means enabling the virtual environment so I can use it. From the moment in which I activate a virtual environment, I stop using the default Python environment in my system. After activating my Codefather virtual environment, if I use the which Python command, I can see that I'm using the Python interpreter inside Codefather slash bin. There is also a way to get out of a virtual environment. To do that, we use the deactivate command. And then if I run the which Python command, I can see that now, the default interpreter is the system1 located in slash usr slash bin. 
but let's find out why. If I look at the value of the path environment variable when I'm outside of the virtual environment, and then compare it with the value of the path environment variable after activating my virtual environment, I can see that at the beginning of the path environment variable, there is the bin directory inside the codefather virtual env. That's why when I activate the codefather virtual environment, the default Python binary becomes the one inside codefather slash bin. Inside the Activate script, you can see the lines responsible for setting the new value of the path environment variable once a virtual environment is activated. And there is one thing I want to find out. Where does the deactivate command come from? And if I look at the activate script, I can actually see a function called deactivate. After activating a virtual environment, when I run deactivate in the terminal, I'm basically executing the function defined in the activate script. Let's activate the Codefather virtual environment again because I want to confirm that when I install a new package, like the Django one, for example, the new package gets installed inside the lib directory that belongs to the virtual environment. As you can see from the ls command, Django is installed under codefather slash lib slash python 3.7 slash site packages. So the Django package is only installed in the virtual environment and doesn't have any impact on the system level Python. Finally, to remove a virtual environment, you just deactivate to get out of the virtual environment and then use the rm-fr command. That's it for this video, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to learn how to become a Python developer, hit the subscribe button to get notified every time I publish a new video. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.